Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ, and after a lot of build-up, we finally made it to Evergrande City to take on the Elite Four. We've earned all eight Hoenn Gym badges and made our way through Victory Road, so only the region's Elite stand in our way now. The first member, Sydney, specializes in Dark-type Pokemon, and like his three associates, he uses a team of five. So, you know the drill, that's how many cards we'll need to draw for this one. Okay, we're going to be using the team of Mistrevus, Rhydon, Ariados, Kabuto, and Squirtle. Bit of a mixed bag, that. A ghost type certainly wasn't what I wanted, but we do have a decent bug in the shape of Ariados. We will be limited to just the base 20 power leech life as far as attacks go, but it's something at least. Let's have a look at what other moves we'll have at our disposal. Alright, first in line is Schist the Rhydon. At level 48, his moveset's made up of Rock Blast, Scary Face, Strength, and Horn Drill. I do have the TM for Earthquake, but I'd rather save it for later if possible. Myrtle the Mistrevus is up next, and at level 46, she's equipped with Thunder, Confuse Ray, Pain Split, and Perish Song. We can't really push on with Ghost-type moves, so this seems like our best option. Also at 46, we've got Ariadne the Ariados, who's got the moves Leech Life, Constrict, Spiderweb, and Hyper Beam. Even though it's pretty weak, Leech Life is quite effective against a couple of Sydney's Pokemon, so it should play a big part here. Back up at level 48, Hachi the Kabuto's got Mudshot, Metal Sound, Sand Attack, and Surf in his moveset. And finally, we've got Carissa the Squirtle at level 49, and he's got Surf, Blizzard, Rain Dance, and Skull Bash. Alright, let's give this a try. We start off the Elite Four with Sydney's Mightyena facing off against our Rhydon. Intimidate immediately lowers Rhydon's attack, but you know how I love an Oko move. We call for Horn Drill, which Sydney tries to thwart with a Sand Attack, but it's no good. Rhydon's Horn Drill connects at the first time of asking, handing us the advantage right away. When Sydney sends in Crawdon, we recall Rhydon and send in Squirtle. I didn't really have a plan here beyond sending in a Pokemon to take a Surf, so for some reason I went for Skull Bash? I think in my head it worked more like Hyper Beam or Frenzy Plant and we'd recharge afterwards, but instead of doing that, Carissa just lets Crawdon attack twice with Strength. That evens up the match at 4-4, so chalk that one up to me being dumb. We send in Mistrevus next, who decides to send a Thundercrack way off target. Crawdon's Surf deals some decent damage to Myrtle, but with some time to take aim, she's honed in and hits Thunder at the second attempt. It wipes out Crawdon in one, giving us the lead once more. Sydney sends in his Cacturn next, and we call for a Confuse Ray, but the Grass-type breaks through Confusion to connect with Faint Attack. That obviously knocks out Mistrevus, tying up the match once more. We send in Ariados because she has the quad effective Leech Life in her moveset, and that's definitely our best plan. After a Leech Seed from Cacturn, Ariadne attacks, draining a little over half of the Scarecrow's health. As both Pokémon are leeching hit points from one another, the battle drags on a bit until Sydney's forced to use a full restore. Ariados and Cacturn continue going back and forth until both are stuck in red health, but Ariadne eventually triumphs, finishing the matchup with just 21 HP. After Shiftry sent in, the Leech Seed drains that further, leaving Ariados with just 4 hit points. I think Ariadne has a further part to play here, so we recall the Spider to stop Leech Seed from knocking her out and send in Kabuto. Shiftry uses Double Team over and over to raise his evasion as Hachi attempts to lower his speed with Mudshot. Kabuto doesn't even get hit once across several turns, so we go back out to Rhydon, hoping Sydney continues calling for non-damaging moves. That doesn't quite come to fruition as Shiftry attacks with extra sensory, but at least it's not a grass-type move. As we've got a couple of quad-weak team members left, that wouldn't be ideal. In spite of all the double teams, Rhydon slams Shiftry with strength to take him below half health. Swagger then confuses Rhydon while simultaneously giving him a healthy attack boost. That works out for Sydney in the short run as he hits himself in confusion, but after snapping out of it, Strength scores him the knockout, leaving the first Elite Four member with only one. Absol's up last, and thanks to Torment, we're forced to switch our attack plan from Strength to Rock Blast. After a Sword Stance from the Dark type, Rhydon attacks, but only sends a couple of blasts, so Absol lives in red health. A not very effective Rock Slide forces Schist to flinch, but Strength ends the battle. We make it past Sydney with three Pokémon still standing, so that's a pretty strong start. Alright, with one down, we can head onwards to the next room where we'll face off against Phoebe. The Ghost-type member of the Elite Four also uses a team of five, so once again, that's how many cards we need to draw. We're definitely going to need some good type matchups for this one, because a bad mix could make this next to impossible. Alright, let's draw our team. We're going to be using Hitmonchan, Tentacruel, Apom, Butterfree, and Kadabra. That's going to make this difficult, I think. Also, shout out to Hitmonchan for coming out before the final battle. This is a first. Anyway, Psychic, Normal, and Fighting are all pretty questionable typings here, and we're not going to have any super effective moves on side. Let's have a look at the team. 
Pelton the Apom's up first at level 50 and he's got Water Pulse, Tickle, Screech and Thunder. That was the best we could do with TMs as normal type attacks aren't any use. Tyson the Hitmonchan is at level 48 and he's equipped with Fire Punch, Detect, Earthquake and Ice Punch. Again, our stab moves are completely ineffective so we had to use up the TM for Earthquake. Manowar the Tentacruel is at level 49 with the moves Surf, Screech, Barrier and Acid. Screech could come in handy but mostly we're going to be relying on Surf there. Also at 49 we've got Meadow the Butterfree and Psybeam, Safeguard, Gust and Silverwind make up her moveset. Finally we've got Laltara the Kadabra who's at level 51 with Psychic, Recover, Reflect and Future Sight. She's probably got enough time to get off one move before being blown away so hopefully Psychic can deal some damage. Let's give this a go. Phoebe leads off with her Dusclops and we start out with Apom. I don't think there's much that the Ghost type can do against Pelton so we just have to wait for the curse. We keep calling for Screech as Dusclops uses Protect but after a couple of tries Phoebe instructs her to use Curse. That cuts away a quarter of Pelton's HP before we can recall him to send in Hitmonchan. After a Confuse Ray we switch right back to Apom because he's our best counter here. Dusclops swings a Shadow Punch expecting to hit Tyson but Pelton can just stand there as the fists waft past him. After getting confused once more we switch back out to Hitmonchan and Dusclops KOs herself with Curse. That was really the best strategy there. Bayonet sent in next and as Tyson's Curse we switch back out to Apom. You may be sensing a theme here. Sadly Bayonet doesn't know Curse so we'll actually have to work for this one. The changeup does mean Apom can avoid a Shadow Ball meaning a Water Pulse is the first attack to land. In the end Pelton's able to deal a little bit of damage but Thunderbolt and Psychic combine to take him down. Kadabra's up next because I think this is the perfect opportunity to use her. She attacks first with Psychic which annihilates Bayonet so Phoebe sends in another Bayonet. Cool. Laltara is still faster and attacks with Psychic again which leaves Bayonet well below half health. As expected a single Shadow Ball destroys Kadabra but she did her job. We call on Hitmonchan next hoping that Earthquake will be enough to finish this and it is. This is going surprisingly well. Phoebe sends in Sableye next and another arena shattering Earthquake badly injures her right away. Double team up Sableye's evasion but not enough to dodge an ice punch. I didn't want another Earthquake to leave Sableye in position for a hyper potion so just plumped for a weaker move instead. Phoebe calls for Shadow Ball but it's not enough to score the knockout. Tyson strikes the ground around him shaking things up and Sableye is lost in the debris. That takes Phoebe down to one and we've still got three Pokemon standing. Dusclops number two is sent in and one final earthquake is all Tyson can manage. Shadow Ball knocks out Hitmonchan so we send in Butterfree hoping Dusclops is feeling inaccurate with Rock Slide. Psybeam further weakens the ghost but her eye is in today. Rock Slide grounds Meadow one-shotting her and leaving us in a one-on-one. -on -one. Tentacruel comes in and sends a powerful wave crashing into Dusclops but the further this goes the more her defenses impress. After a super effective earthquake leaves Manowar weak, Dusclops munches down a citrus berry to effectively end our match. Tentacruel attacks again with Surf, knowing if this doesn't do it, it's all over. Some way, somehow, a critical hit ends the battle, finishing off Dusclops to hand us a pretty miraculous win. This battle was way more difficult than I thought it would be. I wasn't using Earthquake to begin with, hoping to save it for later, but Tyson really needed a powerful physical attack and ultimately that made the difference. None of the failed attempts were particularly interesting though. A lot of losses to our final Dusclops, whose combination of high defenses and powerful moveset really didn't work for our team. Okay, hopefully these battles don't keep scaling because anything tougher than that may be a bridge too far. Glacia is next in line and of course we're going to need another team of 5. A nice mix of fire and electric types would do nicely. Alright, it's time to draw some cards. Okay, I believe in the heart of the cards. I no longer believe in the heart of the cards. Okay, well, Weedle, Raticate, Barboach, Jinx and Togetic. That is not a very good team for this. I feel like I don't really need to explain why but for an ice type specialist we don't have a lot going for us here. Let's go through the movesets. Ibarbo the Barboach is at 52 with the moves Earthquake, Snore, Rest and Fissure. I don't think I need to explain that, you know exactly what I'm going to do. Marith the Weedle is at level 50 and knows Poison Sting and String Shot. Essentially just a sacrificial worm. Not sure the gods go for those but I guess we'll find out. Splinter the Raticate's also at level 50 and he's equipped with Thunder, Endeavor, Superfang and Hyperfang. If we're going to make it through this one, Raticate is going to have to play a big part. Britta the Jinx is at 52 and her moveset's made up of Ice Punch, Fake Tears, Light Screen and Psychic. The partial Ice Typing does give her some value so hopefully Psychic can help us through. Finally we've got Abuli the Togetic at level 53 and Fire Blast, Encore, Wish and Safeguard make up her moveset. 
probably could have used a PP up on Fire Blast as it's her only attack, but I'm confident she can sweep with just five. All right, for what's very possibly the final time, let's get into it. Glacia leads off with our first Celio, and we start things with Barboach. We call for Fissure to begin the battle, and Barbo splits the battlefield down the middle, removing Celio from existence. I think we all know what's coming here. Barboach sweep. Sadly, past me chickened out though, so Barbo just hits the incoming Glacia with Earthquake. Barboach is really just wrecking Glacia's room here. I'm not entirely sure what Glalie was doing to get hit by that, but I'm not going to complain. Rolling around on the ground, the angry Icy Bauble hits back with Ice Beam. Ibarbo seems set on dealing as much damage as possible to the battlefield, so causes another Earthquake before finally being wiped out. That was a strong start. We send in Jinx to finish the job, but Psychic leaves Glalie in red health because Brit is the worst. Thankfully, Icy Wind is basically just AC for Jinx, but knowing that Glacia is going to heal up, we call for Fake Tears next. After the full restore, Britta harshly lowers Glalie's special defense as Light Screen wears off and we switch out to Weedle knowing that Crunch is coming next. Weedle nobly sacrifices himself for the team so we can send Jinx back in at full speed. She returns to battle and with a special defense drop, Psychic one-shots Glalie to leave us in a 3 on 3. Glacia sends in her second Glalie and predicting hail, we spend our first turn on Fake Tears. That pays off massively, but Britta's Psychic just fails to take down Glalie, meaning Shadow Ball is next. The super effective blast of energy blows away Jinx, but she's really outdone herself here. We send in Raticate next to clean up, and Hyperfang does just that. Glacia is down to two, and her creatively assembled team means that her second Celio is up next. I don't want to risk Thunder right away, so while she's at full health, go for a Super Fang instead. For those who don't know, Super Fang always cuts away half of a Pokemon's remaining HP, so it's best to start with it. Celio's Blizzard and the Spitting Hail combine to leave Splinter weak, so it's really now or never. Raticate looks skyward and raises his little ratty paws, summoning the thunder that strikes down Celio, leaving Glacia with only one. Walrein comes in and luckily the hail stops. We only have one chance to attack with Splinter, so we call for Endeavor which takes Walrein all the way down to red health. Ice Beam cuts down Raticate and now we're in a one-on-one -on -one with a flying type against an ice type. Not ideal. Togedic enters the battle as Walrein devours a citrus berry and goes bold with an attempted sheer cold. You know what, I respect that. It doesn't come to anything as Abuli sends a Fire Blast, crashing into the partial water type. That takes Walrein back into red health, which means another full restore is coming next. Togetic's Fire Blast slightly weakens Walrein, but this really isn't looking good. We need to keep Abuli alive for as long as possible right now. Hoping that Glacia is as stubborn as I am, we call for Encore, praying that Sheer Cold's coming next. Walrein does in fact go for and miss the Oko move, which buys us some time. After another miss Sheer Cold, Abuli lands a Fire Blast, this time scoring a burn. We really needed that. Sheer Cold and Fire Blast are called for once more, and yet again, Walrein misses as Togedic hits. That's the end of the Encore, though. Walrein's freed up to use Ice Beam now and does just that, leaving Abuli in red health, so Togedic needs to connect once more. Fire Blast hits its mark, and just to ensure the victory, Abuli lands a critical hit. I don't know if that was a necessary crit with the burn, but if it was, that may well be the most unbelievable win I've ever experienced. Like Phoebe before her, Glacia did not go down without a fight. There were a lot of failed attempts here, including two to Explosion, which just seemed cruel. Like, that's my move. Come on. Anyway, that's it. We've made it past the first three members of the Elite Four. If we can, I'm gonna attempt to finish the game in the next episode. That means we're going after the final Elite Four member, four-time Grammy Award winner Drake, the Hoenn champion and Ardman Animation's main man Wallace, and the former champion, that bodyguard that Patrick Warburton played in Scream 3? Stephen Stone. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.